If you've watched most of my videos since I've started, first of all, thank you for sticking around. And second, you'd realize I have an affinity for the Chinese tech tree. My first video was about China getting American vehicles earlier than the US tree. My first sort of shit post video was on the J7E. And my top vehicle in Air RB is the Shenyang F5. China's the first tree I've finished researching entirely. Though I suspect that to change once Chinese helicopters are fully released. And having grinded out this tree in its entirety, I can really say it's the worst tech tree. And no, when I say it's the worst, I don't mean the tanks are awful or grinding is a painful experience. I mean it really is the worst in terms of original vehicles. And I know you're saying, what about Israel? That tech tree is copy paste through and through and it doesn't even have a tier 1. And I say, it's true, but it's copy-paste because that's really all that Israel can offer. Take away the Magak, take away the shots, you really got nothing until the Merkava. China has a lot of unique vehicles, and yet they still prefer adding copy-pastes. Let's take a look at the Chinese tech tree. From tier 1 to tier 4 of ground vehicles, there are only 6 unique vehicles. For the air tree, there are also 6. If we extend it up to 7, China gets a nice share of unique vehicles for ground forces at the end, or around 19, but only gets 7 unique aircraft. So, when people say that China is a copy-paste tree, they're not exactly off the mark, but are wrong on the reasons why. The most common reason I hear about why China is a copy-paste tree is because they're bringing in Chinese players from the Chinese client when they added the tree in 1.91 Night Vision. This is simply not the case. Even before the Chinese tree was added, Chinese players have been playing the global client when they realized the Chinese client was awful. And it wasn't any great deal of difficulty. War Thunder Global isn't banned in China per se, so no firewall hopping was necessary. While this is the case, they did bring in the infamous Chinese consultant they used in the Chinese client. A big reason that the Chinese tech tree is the way it is after being added to the global client is because the Chinese consultant was more than unwilling to consider suggestions that didn't match with his sources, even if his sources got it wrong. These included the gunner sight zoom values on the ZTZ-96 up to the ZTZ-99 and the notorious gun depression on the PGZ-09. For some reason, we already have the A5C, but not the Q53 it was based on in the tech tree. Like, come on Gaijin, just give it the Chinese camo, rename the magic to PL7, and you're good. But hey, there's really ways Gaijin could have made the Chinese tree a bit more unique. Take the J6A for example. Instead of adding that as the MiG-19 PT repost for China, why not the J6-3? This looks like a swept wing MiG-21 with a PL-2 mounted on the wingtip rails. It had the upgraded WP-6A over the J6A with a 3 30mm gun setup of the MiG-19S also had a brake parachute. Of course, this particular model had numerous issues because it was pressed into production without certification and required extensive modifications before it went out of service. But things like these don't matter in War Thunder, so it's alright. Before I get to what J7 we could have a 10.3 between the J7 II and the J7E, let me complain about their cockpits first. The cockpit is a mix of Chinese and Cyrillic writing that's caused by asset reuse of the MiG-21 F-13's cockpit. This is also the case with the premium Shenyang F-5, which is a asset reuse of the MiG-17. Like, sure Korean MiGs were flown by Russian pilots whatever, but this particular modification of the F-5 is a post-Korean War modification. Anyways, with that out of the way, the problem with the J-7 is that development was slowed drastically by the Cultural Revolution by the time the J7 had its improvements, more technologies were available. So variants before the J7E could already fire missiles like the PL7 with just as many missiles. The J7C, the Chinese built MiG-21MF, could carry four PL5s and was fitted with a JL7 Pulse Doppler radar. The J7D, its direct successor, could carry four PL7s and PL8s, which could arguably be better than the PL5B. So the only thing we can really have for China 10.3 is the J7-2A with only the PL-7 without countermeasures or radar. For tanks, 
China is still waiting on the WZ122, Type 85-2, and the Type 92 Yi Tian. They already have the TY-90 so it should be an easy add to fill the need for China to have an anti-air missile that's kind of better than the HN-6 on the PGZ-04A. For a radar guided missile, there's also the HQ-7 which is a curtail missile like the ITO-90M. The point is China can be a whole lot better. The only good thing about copy pasting these vehicles is that it collates vehicles from other War Thunder nations so you can familiarize yourself with them in case you decide to grind down that very nation. China is a really good modern tank roster but for early Cold War and aircraft, there could really be more that can be done. Still waiting for the Q53 and the rework for the J8B. The J8B with the PF10 or the PL11 used a pulse Doppler radar instead of the current radar it has. So anyway, that's what I think. What do you think are the pros and cons of the Chinese tree and what makes it appealing for you to grind? As always, this is the Dr. MD. Come back next time when I forget that naval exists. Godspeed.